The following dramatization is based on case records, personal interviews, and news reports. Names and locales have been changed, and some composite characters have been included. by the light of the moon. Andy! Miss Beans, what's our strategy today, huh? What's our strategy? Uh -oh. Mama's gonna catch me. She always does. No, no, not this time. Okay, look, here's our plan. Here you are. Here's Mama in the kitchen, and here's the cookie jar. Hey, you greedy kid. Come here. 
Come here, chick, chick. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Please. Come on, I'm starving. <laughs> please, 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 please. Mm. Oh, mm. Mm, you're hungry. Mm -hmm. mm. But Tella didn't get these, did she? No, you were beans. hiding them. Yes. <laughs> she didn't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it about this time of day? Well. I think it's just that we made it safely through another day. Mm -hmm. Now we're back home together again. Probably won't feel that way when Kelly gets all out and on her own. When Kelly gets on her own? My goodness. You gonna start worrying about that already? Well, she graduates from high school next year, and a year will come and go before we even know it. Yeah. We'll be old and gray with... One foot in the grave, too, before you know it. Maybe you should start worrying about that, too. I do. You do? Yes. Well, maybe you shouldn't. Mm. Oh. You better clean up. Dinner's almost on the table. Yeah. yeah. How long? How much time? Oh, a little bit of time. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of time. You kids studying? <laughs> I can't take this anymore. I looked at an apartment today. We're not graduating until next year. And not at all unless we pass this year. I know. I just felt like dreaming a little how it's gonna be. Where was it? In town. I can't live in town. There's no decent jobs around here. You know, I've got to live closer into the city so I can make enough to live and save for junior college. Yes, I know that, too. Your folks will be cool about your leaving when the time comes, won't they? I guess. And they know I'm grown. And they have Tella. It's funny. Tella even looks like you guys. I forget she isn't yours. <laughs> so, is she just going to be your foster kid till she grows up? Unless we can adopt her. So far we can't because her father still makes her visit him and his new wife. Do I do the dishes then, mm -hmm. young lady? Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, we'll Tala, one. you want to do prayer tonight? Thank you for our family. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our food. Amen. 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 Brother Ben shot the <laughs> kill the end. <laughs> Put your napkin in your lap. Tala is going to see Dr. Deborah tomorrow. I'm going to get a balloon. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You can take your balloon with you when you go see Papa Ed. But I don't want to go to Papa Ed. I know, but tomorrow's your visitation. But I don't want to. Beans. Don't you want a piece of bread? Look at me. Look at Mom. Look. Oh, it's no. Oh, it's no. 
Dr. Cottrell, Dr. Janet Cottrell, emergency admitting. No, I don't see any rhinoceroses in this unit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if there's any elephants in this here. Okay. Ooh, herds of them. And they're dancing. <laughs> you have a very healthy little girl here. You can get her dressed now. I'll go beans. I'll make my usual report to the court. Any concerns you have? Tell them. How about if you go pick out a balloon? Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. I'll be there in a minute, honey. Oh, Mickey, would you get tell a balloon? Great. The visitations with her father are getting worse. She has bad dreams the night before, and she cries and carries on when the caseworker comes for her, and she is cranky for days after. I can't help but wonder if maybe he's hurting her like he did before she came to us. Have you noticed any bruises? No, not really, just what she gets playing. Have you told her caseworker about this? I don't have to. He has to pry her away from me every other Thursday. He says she's just doing it for attention. Let's see, you've had Tella since she was, what? A year old. When she first came to us, she was way behind. She just lay in her crib all day staring. You couldn't even get her to smile. What about her biological mother? Well, she saw her for a few times off and on, but she's got new children she can hardly take care of. Are there any plans to return her to her natural father? I can't imagine that there would be. Nothing against him. I mean, he's got no income, just disability from some injury he got in the service. He doesn't drive because of some seizures that he has, and uh, he lives in this little trailer park without a yard or anything for a child. You've expressed an interest in adopting Tella. We would give anything. I'll write a letter to the court. Can I wash yourself or do you want me to? All right. Oh, don't. Well, then you do it. No. <sighs> Tella, why do you have to act like this every time you have to go see Papa Ed? I know you don't like to go there and I don't like to send you, but it's the judge's orders and even mommies and daddies have to obey the judge. What's the matter? Doesn't he play with you when you go over there? You know he doesn't keep you clean. But he feeds you, doesn't he? And he treats you nice, doesn't he? Doesn't he? He spanks my bottom. What for? My don't what he says. Well, tell him he's your father and you're gonna have to obey him. But I don't want him to. To what? I don't want to pull on my bottom. You don't want him to what? And poke me down there. Oh, beans. I'm not naughty. Oh, no, sweetheart, of course you're not. Did you tell anybody about this? Nathan. Well, that's good. What did he say? He says I'm telling tale. He said, Papa, I did not do that. But I'm not telling tales. No, no, of course you're not. Come on, Beans. Let's call your daddy. Hello, this is Clara Brady. Can I speak to my husband, please? Would you tell him to call me when he gets back in? It's important. Thank you.
Is she ready to go? She's in her room. I want to talk to you privately. She says that she told you that her father had been touching her private parts. She said he pulled her bottom, whatever that means. Well, it means something, and whatever it is, isn't right. She also says that you told her that she was just telling big tales. Yeah, that's what I told her. Well, why would she make something like that up? She doesn't even know about those things. Children have big imaginations, Mrs. Brady. Why she'd make up something like this is easy. She's tried everything else to get out of these visits. Fits, nightmares, bad behavior. Hey, Tella, come on, are you ready to go? Has it ever occurred to you that maybe she's not trying anything? Maybe there's a reason why she doesn't want to visit her father. Yeah, it's because you spoil her rotten, that's why. I mean, why go visit a guy that lives in a little trailer and only has a few toys when at home you got everything a kid could possibly want? I cannot believe that that's the reason. Well, look, he may not be your kind of folks, but he's got no record. She would not make something like this up. I know my child. See, that's the problem. You seem to have forgotten she's not your child. Hey, Tella? Tell her. Hey, sweetheart. Got any knock-knock jokes for me like last time? Mama, no, I Can we get this over with quick? The longer we let her hang back, the worse it is for I'll carry her out. Fine. Mama, I don't want to go. I want to stay home. Please, son. Ask you nicely. Please. Can't we at least stop the visitation for a while until she calms down? I don't want to go, please, Mom. No, I don't want to, Mom. Oh, I take her. Don't you touch this child. No, I don't want to, Mama. No. Tell us. Tell us. No, I want to. No, I want to. I know you don't want to no. go. Listen to Mama. Listen to Mama, please. Honey. Get me out. You'll be back Get soon. Get me out. You'll be back soon. I'm making mashed potatoes for dinner. Tell her, would you cut the show no. business? Five minutes down the road, she'll be singing and telling me riddles like she always does. This is for your benefit. I cannot let this go on. I have got to tell you that as soon as you're out of this driveway, I'm going to go to the phone and I'm going to call your supervisor. Well, you're welcome to call her if you want to, Mrs. Brady, but I think you ought to know she thinks this is because you're turning Tella against her father. I suppose it's going to make me any more nervous than I already am. Hey, Frenchie. Do you really think we should tell him what Tella says Ed's been doing to her? If we don't, he's just going to say, so she don't like going to visit her father. Too bad, but the law says she has to. If she had been... Go. Thank you. If she had been plain out raped or beaten, there'd be bruises evidence. The way it is, it's just her say-so. And the world does not put as much stock in the word of a four-year-old as we do. If you don't believe in us, seems like we got the wrong lawyer. We have some milk, please. Uh... What if she's just giving us the run around the way Nathan says she is? Is that what you really believe deep down inside? No. Of course not. I'm just nervous. Oh, I hope we're doing the right thing. You worried about going over on Nathan's head? You scared of making children's services mad? No, I think I've already taken care of that. Listen, these aren't vengeful people we're dealing with. They're just folks doing their jobs the best they can. We can't expect them to understand Tella the way we do. They're not our parents. Neither are we, they keep reminding us. Well, I don't notice nobody else feeding her, bathing her, and tucking her in at night, nursing her when she's sick. No. 
We're the lucky folk that get to do that. Yeah, well, that makes us the ones that have to protect her then, too, don't it? I don't think there's anybody with so hard a heart they wouldn't understand that when it come down to it. Anyway, you got nothing to lose. They're not gonna take her away from us. If that's what you're thinking, you're getting away from yourself, honey. They could turn us down for adopting her. If they do, we'll just keep filing new adoption papers till she's 93 years old if we have to. And if they turn us down, then we'll file again. As far as adoption goes, there's no point in filing at this time. As long as a natural parent shows interest in their child, the child can't be placed for adoption. And in the second matter, one problem is your legal status. You don't have any. Excuse me, Mr. Stroll, but I think you're going to have to explain that because uh, we're not all that much up on the law, except for stopping at red lights. Well, foster parents aren't recognized by the law. We can try to get the court to hear your concerns, but the court's got no obligation to listen. And if Children's Services doesn't think the child has a problem with the natural father, the court's a lot more likely to rely on their judgment than yours. Well, meaning no disrespect, but that doesn't make sense. We're the ones who live with this child, not Children's Services. That may be, but it has no legal bearing. Look, Mr. and Mrs. Brady, I'll do anything you want me to, anything I can, but I can't hold out much hope to you. you. You don't have any proof of molestation. Nathan Lee's never reported it. And in a lot of legal circles, a child may be considered an unreliable witness. So what it comes down to is the two people with no legal rights are trying to determine the best interest of one with doubtful credibility. Based on her say so. D -d do you understand what I'm saying? What you're saying is, we've got no chance. No, what I'm saying is, you have no case. Well, if we don't have a case, then what chance have we got? Maybe one. The judge. Some people say that Julia Quinn is a strong advocate for children. Mrs. Brady, I'm Mrs. Soames, Judge Quinn's assistant. You must be Tella. You're right on time. Well, can you type, Tella? No. Well, come on over here and you can practice. Jump up on the chair. That's a girl. Oh, you're so big. Okay, now we're gonna put some paper in here for you. And now it's on. She seems real relaxed. Does she know why she's here? Well, I told her, but uh, I don't think it's sunk in. It's all very new to her. Did your lawyer explain to you why the judge set it up for Tella to meet her father here for the visitations? Yeah, he said it was so the judge could see the problem for herself. Well, actually, the judge is in court in the afternoons, and she won't be here in person, but she's asked me to observe and report to her. I was hoping that we could just end the visitations with her father, at least for a while. Tella goes through such agony. Mrs. Brady... It's very serious business interfering with the rights of the natural parent and the child to be together. And 
Judge Quinn needs to be certain the problem really is between the child and the father. Well, who else would it be between? Well, sometimes when the foster parents care too much, they can influence the child against the natural parent without meaning to, of course. Is that what Children's Services says we're doing? It's a consideration whenever there's a problem like this. Well, little Miss Secretary, let's just see what you've done. Oh, look what this smart little girl has typed. I didn't even mean it. <laughs> you did, you did. T-E-L-L-A, that's right. Well, I have to show this to Mrs. Brady. Well, come in, Mr. DeBusk. Hi, Tella. supposed to do. She's afraid of everything now. The other day at school, she wouldn't get on the bus. You see, the bus goes by the courthouse. She told me if she goes to the courthouse, she'll never come home. I'm sure you've heard the expression, the wheels of justice turn slowly. That's hard for adults to accept. I really don't know how to explain it to a child. Is there any progress? You know, Judge Quinn has actually reduced the visitation. I know the wait is hard on you folks, but Judge Quinn has taken the reports from Mrs. Soames, sent her out to do a home study on Tella's father, and ordered a psychiatric evaluation. Psychiatric? In my opinion, Judge Quinn is trying to build an ironclad case, and it takes nothing less to terminate the rights of a natural parent. Well, how much longer do you think? Well, you know that Judge Quinn is up for re-election against Art Greer. A lot of folks say she's expected to beat him. That's the consensus, but if Judge Quinn should happen to lose, it might take months before a new judge could get acquainted with your case. I, I'll just keep doing everything I can. Thank you. Controversy is right, Bill. I'm Andrea Newman reporting live from what's shaping up to be a major controversy here in Cleary County. I'm standing in front of an all but completed complex, which may have been Hello. contaminated with... Hello, uh, Mrs. Tom Brady. Yes? Yes, this is Violet Young, Tella's case supervisor at Children's Services. Yes? There's been a new court order regarding Tella's visitation. This week, her visit will be as usual, but starting next week, she's going to have overnight visits with her father. No, no, that's not right. Who gave that order? It's Judge Greer's order, Mrs. Brady. I assume you know Judge Greer has taken the bench. I know that, but has he read her file? Does he know her case? I'm sure he has. We're counting on your cooperation. Greer's changing the visitations again. Oh, Are you letting he's Tella go see her? Well, here's everything you asked for, including the psychiatric evaluation of Tella and us. There's a lot of testimonials in there, too, a lot of support. You know, I still don't understand why we're the ones that have to prove ourselves. Seems like Mr. DeBus could be the one that have to do the explaining. Well, the judge has to collect as much objective evidence as possible. These are good. We'll take them into court with us. We're going to court? Yes, there's a hearing schedule. What for? Well, I hope it means the judge is going to hear your side of the story. I wanted to do this with you. 
your daddy and I are so wound up over Tella. I'm afraid you're getting short shrift. I'm doing fine, Mom. Are you throwing this away? I've had it since the seventh grade. Well, maybe I'll mend it, then I can wear it when I'm lonesome for you. I don't feel right leaving you. Now, Kelly? You and Daddy shouldn't have to deal with everything all alone. Oh, listen to me. I have loved every minute of your being in this house. Every year of it. And I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> oh, a whole lot. But I'm not gonna let all of this with Tella and the welfare screw up your life, too. I'm not. This is your natural time to spread your wings. And I want to see my little girl fly. Okay? <laughs> You'll be okay? Well, you know your daddy and I are adults. <laughs> we are, at least most days. <laughs> the way I'm carrying on, you'd think I was going to China. <laughs> That's Tella. You stay here. I'll get her. You'll just get mad and make everything worse. Go, sweetheart. Are you all right? Hi. Oh, she had a great visit. Oh my God, she's filthy. Oh, she's been out playing. Kids get dirty when they play. Sure they get dirty, then you clean them up. She probably slept this way. Kelly, different people have different standards of hygiene. What standard is this? My sister got to be a foster child because she was neglected. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Wait a minute. A little dirt is a long way away from neglect. I know you folks don't want my advice, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. For your own good, you've got to start letting go of this little girl. We will. When hell freezes. What happened to your room? I'm packing up to move to my new apartment. But I don't want you to go. Oh, I know, honey. <clears throat> but I have to. I'm a big girl now. And you know what? You can have my room if you want. I want you to be in your room. I know. But see, when you're all grown up, then it's time to move out in the world so you can do what you want to do. You know? What do you want to do when you grow up? Beans? Never leave my home. Herself, so you're going to have to force her. Oh, please, Mama. I don't want to go. Mama, no. Look, if she doesn't calm down in 15 minutes, we'll bring her right back. Or you can ride with her. If her father wants to see her, let him come here to do it. What's the problem, Mrs. Brady? I'm a supervisor with Cleary County Children's Services, and this foster mother is obstructing my efforts to take this child for her visitation. I am not anything. If she goes on her own, that's fine. I'm not gonna make her. You've broken the first rule of being a foster parent, Mrs. Brady, and you know what that is. You give the child care, you give the child concern, but you do not get emotionally involved with the child. Please, I want to stay with you. Please, Mommy. It's your failure to keep up with your contract that has caused this whole mess. I have watched this child go back to bedwetting and thumb-sucking and screaming in the middle of the night from nightmares. And you're telling me that it's not because of her father? You're telling me that it's my mistake because I got emotionally involved with her? I'm not 
emotionally involved with this child. I love this child like my own. And I don't care if you've got orders from the Lord himself. I am not going to stand by anymore and let you torture somebody I love. Mama. What are you damn agency people trying to do to that poor child? Mama. put this child in the car. No, ma'am. You put this child in that car or I'll have your badge. Well, you can have my badge, but I'm not putting that child nowhere. Now you're playing games with that little girl's mind. Edward and Marjorie the Busk present in this courtroom? Here present, Your Honor. And Claire and Tim Brady? Here present, Your Honor. Then I think we can dispense with this fairly quickly. In the matter of Tele de Busk, a neglected child who has been awarded of this court for the past four years, I have reviewed the facts of the case and found it to be in this child's best interest at this time to return her to the home of her natural parent, Mr. Edward de Busk. No! What? <clears throat> It is therefore ordered that after a series of weekend visitations on Thursday, November 22nd, 1979, Thanksgiving Day, Tella shall be taken to the residence of Mr. Edward DeBusk at 1 o'clock p.m. And said child shall thereafter permanently reside with Edward DeBusk with the County Welfare Department retaining temporary legal custody until further order of the court. The foster parents are permitted to contact Children's Services to obtain information concerning said child's condition. But, Your Honor... Furthermore, the foster parents will not contact Edward DeBusk or his wife Marjorie DeBusk or Tella DeBusk for three months. This injunction is subject to review at the end of that time and on the condition that they have cooperated, they will then be allowed to visit with Tella. Your Honor, we have a psychiatric report Mrs. right here. Brady! I can understand your disappointment, but you have been foster parents, nothing more. This court stands adjourned. Thanks, Bruce. Congratulations. So what do we do now? File an appeal day after Thanksgiving. rocks. You skipped a rock so hard, you fell plumb off the dock, remember? Remember what happened next? Daddy jumped in and got me. <laughs> That's right. That's right, I did. With all my clothes on, too, remember? Boy, were you laughing. You thought I was about the funniest looking thing you'd ever seen. But I pulled you out, didn't I? Tell her, when we're away from each other, like we're gonna have to be, and you need us and miss us, I want you to think about that time at the lake and all the other times we've had together good ones and bad ones. That way, you feel us real close. But I don't want to go away. I know. 
something else I want you to do. Is anytime you feel lonesome, I want you to look up at the sky. If you see a cloud or a bird or the moon, whatever you see, well, that's a message from your mama and me saying we're thinking about you right at that very moment. And we love you. And one other thing means I want you to know, I want you to to understand this is not all right with your mom and me. It never will be until we're back together again. Because we love you, honey. We love you. Father, we thank thee, Lord, for letting us be a family. We ask you to make us strong today and to keep us all safe till we can be a family together again. I know we're not parties to the legal action, and I know we don't have any legal standing. I'm looking for somebody to help us change that. Yeah, well, I'm surprised anything ever gets done in this world for all the people who tell you you can't do it. Yes, sir. Thanks for your time. You saw Tella? Her father and his wife, they, they go to the same church as me. They brung her last Sunday. Well, well, how did she look? Oh, she didn't look herself. I mean, she looked all right, but 
Nobody could take care of her the way you did, and she don't belong no place but here. Oh, you're in my prayers, all of you. And you're welcome to come over any time you need a shoulder to cry on. I'm alone now myself since my daughter moved over to Bingham, so you come over and holler if you need anything, will you? We will. Thank you. We've got nothing to say against Mr. Struhl. He worked very hard for us, but filing an appeal isn't enough. Tella could be grown up by the time it's heard. I assume you've called other attorneys. We've called so many attorneys, Mr. Wolf, that when I got your message, I couldn't for the life of me recall which one you were. I'm the best one. Let's hope so. Every other one either had a conflict of interest or he didn't take hopeless cases. Well, I don't have a conflict of interest. And I like an occasional hopeless case. Especially if it involves a judge who's not following the rules of procedure like he ought to. From what you're telling me, that sounds like the case here. Well, if not following the rules of procedure means making a decision before you look at the situation, then I say that is the case. Well, let me make a few phone calls. Then I'll get back to you and tell you if there's anything I can do. Tell us the truth, Mr. Wolf. Do we have a chance? I'll do what I can. So just about cover old Stroll's bill. Sold off everything in the record collection, except for Benny Goodman and Beethoven. Now we gotta start thinking about what else we gotta sell. Not that one. It's her favorite. Yeah. Yeah, she's grown. They don't do her hair the way she likes. <laughs> she's looking over here. Don't let her see your face, Claire. We didn't want her to get her hopes up. Still looking? She's not playing with other kids. Oh, I want to call her over here. Do what? Just grab her, put her in the car, go to the airport, get on a plane, and never come back.
Mama, Daddy, get up! Santa Claus came! Beans, you're not supposed to look until morning. It's morning. It's 30 o'clock in the morning. It's 4 o'clock, Tella Beans. Now you get straight back in that bed right this minute. I think Santa brought me a dollhouse. Tella, you been out there looking at the presents? I didn't look. I've just seen it. Beans, come here. Come on in bed with me. Greg Wolf. Hi. Andrea Newman. Yeah, I'll buy that. You had a story to tell me? Uh, yeah. What are you drinking? Just club soda. Club soda? Uh, shall we? Now, I always thought Newman was your middle name. I thought your whole name was... Andrea Newman reporting live, like maybe you were an Indian or something. <laughs> Wolf, what kind of name is that? Appropriate. <laughs> I see. So, what is the story you have to tell me? Clients of mine, foster parents, get this little girl at age one, neglected child. Thank you. They raise her, they love the heck out of her. Want to adopt her. When she's around three, the natural father gets visitation. And the child shows major distress, does not want to visit the father, let alone live with him. Nevertheless, when she's five, the court gives her back to the natural father and enjoins the only people she's ever known as parents from seeing her. That's it? What do you mean, that's it? Did the father mistreat her? Abuser. Well, the natural mother alleged that he abused her physically at the time she gave the kid to the children's services. Right. That was several years ago now. The child's made allegations of sexual abuse. Unsubstantiated. Well, even if there is no record, the foster parents believe her. Look, Mr. Wolf, uh... It'd make a good lead on a Prince story about the need for reform in the foster care system, but my boss is not gonna buy it. She's cute. You know what she said as they took her to live with her father on Thanksgiving Day? She cried the whole way. Begged them to call the judge and tell him she was sorry. That she promised to be good if he'd only let her stay with her mama and daddy. Uh... It's not the evening news. She was returned to her father by court order, right? Right. No crime was committed, no laws were broken, right? Right. Only hearts. Tam! This is ready! Tam! You know, I was thinking, this news lady, she could change her mind. I mean, I know she said no, but she could come around, you know? What 
are you doing? He's got no right to destroy our lives. When your children leave home, you're supposed to go for walks together. You're supposed to go to the movies. Take up a hobby together. You're supposed to come together in bed again. Not lie there in a cold sweat every night, wondering what sick, mean thing he's doing to your little girl now. I'm gonna kill him. I don't care if they hate me for it, and I don't care if I spend the rest of my life in jail for it. I'm gonna kill him! Clara Brady. Mr. Walton told you about us and our little foster child. It's a minute 18. Yes, I'm sorry, Mrs. Brady. I'm sorry I had to say no to that piece. It's not a piece, Miss Newman. Kella is a real live child. And when she was lost and alone, we were the only ones who listened to her. And now nobody will listen to us. I know you've got your reasons. But you're our last resort, and you're Tella's last hope. Please. Oh, well, you're very persuasive. We really appreciate you coming all the way out here. I still can't promise anything. We understand that. Listen, I've got a fresh pot of coffee. Why don't you come on in for a cup? Sure. That's her daughter, Kelly, Miss Newman. Hi. Andrea. Hi. Hi. Kelly lives on her own now, but uh, she comes back every now and then. I think she just misses bossing me around, don't you? <laughs> I got out Tella's baby book to look at, and, and we're going to show you her room later. Well, let me get the coffee. I'll get it. Hope you'll excuse us, Miss Newman. We're kind of short on furniture. Had to sell off all the antique stuff to help pay for the lawyers. Uh, is it March? Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> You know, we, we probably should warn people, but uh, we've gotten so used to it. When Christmas came, we couldn't bear not buying Tella presents. But when it came time to take down the tree, we couldn't put those gifts away unopened. Everything just kind of sat there. And I guess it will till Tella comes home to open them. You haven't seen her at all then? Oh, well, we did see her once. <laughs> We borrowed a friend's car and went to the schoolyard. We dressed up so she wouldn't recognize us. We don't want to give her false hope. You know, it was the strangest thing. Watching her there in that schoolyard was like when you dream of somebody who's died. There they are, right in front of you. And for a minute, it's like you have them again. Only you don't. Come on, Les, what do you say? 
No. Les, this is an important story. It's bureaucracy playing with people's lives, with a child's life. Who do you think you are? Every agency in the county and the whole judiciary is going to be royally ticked off with a story like that. For what? For a good story, Lester. These people are the only parents this child ever knew. I have her Head Start teacher, her pediatrician, a consulting psychiatrist, all saying that to remove her from them would do irreparable harm. The law says biological parents have a right to their biological children. Not if that parent is mistreating that child. The foster parents are convinced the father was abusing and molesting her when she was with him. You think he stopped now that he has her all to himself? By your own admission, Newman, Children's Services thinks that's all a lot of bunk and that the kid made it up because the foster parents hate the father. Maybe they're right. Come on, Harry. Your job title is assistant news director. So what do you let her bring me this half-baked crap for? You know what happens if we put that kind of speculation on the air? We get our behind sued. That's what happens. Forget it. The answer is no. I want to say I told you. You told me. I mean, there are a thousand abused kids' stories out there. What is it about this one? It's a good story, Harry. It's got all the earmarks of a damn good story. I don't know, Harry. You go to the supermarket, and mothers are slapping their kids around, right? You, you go to restaurants, and old married couples are staring past each other. You turn on the news, and everybody's going to war, and here are these people. They've sold half of everything they own. They're in debt up to their ears. Everybody's telling them, forget it, she's not even your kid. And the Christmas tree is still standing, because she hasn't opened her presents yet. Oh, hell, Harry, I don't know. I sure don't see that kind of love very much in this world. Don't want the soundbite to be more than 20 seconds, ever. Got that? Ever. Careful, Newman. You're getting involved. Come on in! Oh. I've been standing on one foot and the other waiting for you to come home. What? My daughter, the one what moved over to Bingham, she calls me this morning and tells me, guess who's in my grandson's school? Your little girl. Tella? In Bingham? Going to Woodrow Wilson Elementary. But why? I told you, her father and his wife hadn't been to church for the longest time. Well, a while back, they started in again. Only they don't bring Tella no more. Well, I didn't think anything about it until my daughter called. Do you think they moved to Bingham? Oh, now there are churches in Bingham. If they was living in Bingham, they wouldn't drive all the way back here on Sunday. Do you suppose Tella ain't with them anymore? I have to call Tim.
Operator, do you have a listing for a Baker? T.W. T.W. Baker on Foothill Road? Uh-huh, that's it. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay. Baker. Uh, Mrs. Baker, this is Clara Brady. I'm Tellus' former foster mother. Look, I know that Tellus is with you now. The children's agency told me not to talk to you. Please. How long has she been with you? Since the beginning of February. Well, then she was only with her father a little more than two months. Why? I really don't know. Did he mistreat her? Look, I, I don't know all the details. They wouldn't tell me anything at first, and uh, after a while I got some of it out of her caseworker. They took her to Children's Hospital on account of something she told a teacher at school. I can't say it over the phone. I'd be too embarrassed. Did he sexually molest her? That's the polite way to put it. Uh, can I ask you one more question? What is it? Do you plan on adopting Tella? Oh, heavens no. I'm a temporary placement home. I've been trying to get them to find long-term care for her since two weeks after she got here. Does she ever talk about us? Oh, yes. Yes, she's told me all about her sandbox and her music box in her room. She says you have chickens. We do. And she calls your mom and daddy. Thank you. She calls us mom and daddy. I hear any more about the Brady story. I just got off the phone with Clara. Did you know Tella only spent two months with her natural father? She was removed from his custody because he was sexually molesting her? We got a story now, Lester. There may be a story now, but it's not a story that this news department's going to do. How can we not do a story about a county government agency covering their own mistake? Where do you get that? After they find out Tella was molested, instead of putting her back with the Bradys, they place her in a temporary foster home as far away from the Bradys as you could possibly get and still be in the same county for eight months. What do you call it? Your interpretation of the facts. You don't have any confirmation of abuse, and maybe Children's Services knows something about the Bradys you don't. Lester, if you let me go to work on the story, I can call Children's Services and find out what they know. Why are you always looking for trouble? Let me do some groundwork. This isn't New York, and you're not an investigative reporter. If that's what you want to be, apply for a job on 60 Minutes. Lester, if there's nothing to it, I'll drop it. Winnetka, you got nothing better to do than hang around in doorways. You deal with this. Shoot. 
How can I get away with that? I'll put it up on the assignment board that you're covering the opening of duck hunting season. Duck hunting season's two months away. Casey doesn't know that. The only time he ventures into the great outdoors is to cross the street for a haircut. That looks good. Are you nervous? Uh, yes. <laughs> Who's nervous? Not me. <laughs> You'll be fine. Okay, oh, uh, will you count backwards uh, from ten? Just use your regular voice. Ten, nine, eight. What comes for eight? Oh, you're not nervous. <laughs> you Don't know. worry. Um, okay, we ready? Great. Um, why don't you start just by showing us some of Tella's album? Oh, okay. So what do you hear from Tella these days? Mrs. Baker says she's doing a lot better in her school. She's jumping rope now. She can do double dutch. I can never do that one myself. <laughs> the Bakers are trying very hard to get children's services to find permanent placement for Tella. But uh, we don't know if it'll be us. This is going to be on the air. I'm working on it. Five, four, three, two, one. Like the toys in Tella's room, the Bradys have kept her toys in the yard as she left them in hopes she will someday return here to play with them. Look, I know you have access to Tella DeBusk's file. I understand you're concerned about your job. I promise I won't use your name to anyone. Hospital records are confidential. I, I can't give information to unauthorized persons. Do you have children? That's none of your business. I'm talking about a six-year-old child. I realize that, but it isn't my problem. You have the power to influence the course of a child's life, for better or for worse, and it's not your problem? I'm sorry about the little girl, but I can't help you. Does the record confirm that Tella DeBusk was physically abused and or sexually molested by her biological father? All I need is a yes or no, please. Newman. You won't use my name. I promise. Yes. To both? Yes. Thank you. To an outsider, it seems surprising. Even questionable that after you removed Tella DeBusk from her father's home, Children's Services chose to place her in a temporary foster home rather than back with the people she knew as her parents. Back with people who desperately wanted her. Well, that decision was not made blindly. I assume your agency had reservations about the suitability of the Bradys as foster parents, but they couldn't have been drastic reservations or you wouldn't have left Tella with them for two and a half years. Well, that information would be confidential. 
But I will say that there was some feeling that the Bradys were overindulgent with the little girl. Too many toys, for instance? That might have been one indicator. Uh, overprotective as well. I see. So when you removed Tella from her father's custody, it was with a view towards planning a permanent placement elsewhere? Yes. And how long was it after you found out Tella was being molested by her natural father that you removed her from his home? Oh, right away, immediately. I see. I'm glad to hear it. You can cut, Dan. Heavenly Father, this is a hard day for us, Lord, because one of us is still missing. Please help us to remember our blessings, even so, and keep us in your love while we wait for her to come home. Amen. Amen. Okay. Is this what you're doing for Christmas? <laughs> this is what I'm doing for Christmas Eve. For Christmas, I'm sleeping all day. What, no family, no mistletoe or figgy pudding? My family is in Missouri, and I hate figgy pudding. Oh, feeling a little bit sorry for ourselves, are we? <sighs> a little. Well, our esteemed producer has sent me over to tell you his sad story. It seems he has a plane to catch, but he can't leave until he fills a four-minute, seven-second hole in the seven o'clock show. Little girl lost his 407. Really? I'll be damned. Harry, what about Casey? He's gone home to eat Christmas turkey. I'll be one. I'm the news director tonight. This is an April Fool. This is Christmas, Newman. Merry Christmas. You know, I don't know why we didn't always leave the tree up. It sure makes the decorating easier. Look, still works. I bought Tell a sweater in a size 7. I wonder if it'll fit her. Mrs. Baker says she's getting a lot taller. <clears throat> I'll get it. Hello? Clara. Oh, Andrea, hi, Merry Christmas. Turn on your TV set. Call everyone you know, we're going on the air. What, really? When did this happen? Why didn't you call me sooner? I'll call you after it airs, all right? Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. That's Andrea, we're going on the air, finally! We're going on the air! For the past year, it's been like a death in the family. There was no death, but Tim and Clara Brady feel no less sorrow since the little girl they called Tella was removed from their home. The Bradys are not Tella's biological parents, but they have been her foster parents for the past four years, since Tella was a baby. The child's room is exactly the way she left it Thanksgiving Day 1979. Her Christmas presents are still under the tree, but like last year, she won't be opening them. Tim and Clara got Tella after the court ruled she was a neglected child. Can you describe what happened that day? How did you prepare her for it? Well, I remember that on that Thanksgiving day, when she had to leave, I, I told her that when she smelled the turkey and such cooking, that uh, we'd have to take her away. Mr. Earl Lockwood, Children's Services. We're confident that this story will have a happy ending. Um, I hope we don't have any more cases that drag on that long. A letter from the county prosecutor's office states that the Cleary County Welfare Department does oppose adoption. No one will say why. Like the toys in Tella's room, the Bradys have kept her toys here in the yard, just the way she left them, in hopes she will someday return here to play with them.
Wow. <laughs> oh, this is it. I know. I can feel it. This, this is it. <laughs> I just hope we're not jumping the gun on all of this. So far, we've had about a hundred calls from well-wishers, but nothing from children's services. Well, I think it's gonna happen. And I'm gonna be ready when it does. I'm sick to death of your crusades. I'm tired of your unprofessionalism. You think you're above everyone else in this newsroom, don't you? You think you're Mike Big Shot Wallace, don't you? Well, show him your little tape and see what he thinks. So how come I'm not fired? I am tempted to put a letter of reprimand in your file. Now, you're not to touch that story again, and you'd better pray we don't get sued. And if either one of you ever shows me stinking, lousy judgment like that again, you can kiss your jobs goodbye. Now, get out of here. What happened? He just wrapped her knuckles. Everything really hit the fan. Rumor has it that the governor's office called Judge Greer and he really landed on children's services. No kidding. You did it, kid. Maybe. Is that good? Yeah, a little deeper. There you go. Okay. That's Kelly. Yeah. You know she'll call back. She'll figure out we're all here. Okay. Right there. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I'll get in. Oh, you'd do anything to get out a little gardening, wouldn't you? <laughs> Hello. I'm Mr. Brady. Uh, this is Mrs. Young from Children's Services. Yes, Mrs. Young. Um calling to inform you that Tella de Busk will be placed back in your home in three weeks. You aren't to see her before the designated date, and there is to be no publicity. After a suitable trial period, you will be considered to adopt her. All this is assuming, of course, uh, you still want her. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Young, yes, we want her. Thank you. Thank you. She's coming home. Who's coming home? Tella! Tella's coming home? Oh, coming home! Excellent weather story to start off with. I've been working on these for days, and I think. You get a crew out to the left end right away. Take the Here you go. Uh, you can slice it on like that. Sure. Nice. Local Emmy. Half a set of classy bookends. Come on, Newman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a good piece of tape. Somebody getting sandwiched In the end, that's all it was. Yeah, it's supposed to get Tella home. Sound, yeah, the audio was fine. I hate goodbyes. Then again, I may never get out of here. Andrea Newman. Andrea, it's Clara Brady. How are you doing? As a matter of fact, I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm heading for the coast. I'll take this to your car, then I'm gone for lunch. Harry, we just wanted to call and say thank you for everything you've done. I wish I could have done more. Well, you've done enough. <laughs> She's coming home. Tell us coming home. Tell us coming home when? Congratulations. Hang on a second, Tim. Harry. See you. Harry. Thanks. Tell us coming home. Yes, in three weeks. Yes, yes. 
Oh, she'll remember us, but you know, you gotta take it easy. She might be shy at first. What time is it? <laughs> Kelly, you have on a watch. Oh, that's her. It's her. It is, it is her. her. <laughs> Hello. Ella? Hi. Oh, my, you've really grown. And look at those glasses. There's. You've gotten tall. You know, she's not the same child. You may find you don't want her. We want her, Mrs. Young, any way she is, and any way we can get her. came to us, she was all closed off. But we just loved her till she felt safe and was all right. We can do that again. That's right. Just gonna have to take it one day at a time. Tella, come on up into the house. That's right. It used to be. We sold them all. Except for that one. My favorite. Let's go upstairs. Beans? How come you 
come you call me beans? Did you forget? Did you forget I used to call you beans? I didn't forget you used to say, how's my beans? And then I would say, how come you call me beans? Because you're full of beans. Oh, you're so full of beans. <laughs> you're all <home>, beans. Thank uh -huh.